Ooh, what's up everybody? My name is Slinted. Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we are back with Erased. Yes, another review on Erased, finally. As we reviewed Season 1, Episode 1, as I am reviewing the entire series of Erased the Anime. So yeah, this is my review for Season 1, Episode 2 of Erased, with the episode title, Palm of the Hand. Let's get right into the video. So, in our last review, we went over the fact that Satoru kind of got blamed for the murder of his mother when it was obviously this other killer dude. And he did the whole revival thing like he did in the beginning of the episode. But this time, of course, the revival brought him back to his sort of childhood years, all the way back to when he was still in school. All the way back in 1988. So, of course, at this time, Satoru is confused as all hell as he knows that he got hit with a revival, and he's back to 18 years ago when he's still in school. So, obviously, something's wrong here. What could he have been sent back this far for? So, with all this confusion, Satoru just dips out of school because, well, he knows that it's just a revival, and he thinks, well... He can just change it and stuff, so might as well just dip, as he kind of has no time to care about school. <laughs> but as Satoru is running to his house to check on his mom because she died right before he went back, we pass this girl and everything goes in slow motion. Obviously signifying and showing that this girl would somewhat be important to Satoru's story or why he got set back this far. Which, if you recall in the first episode, when we were talking about how a girl or a few girls went missing and murdered by a dude named Yuki that was clearly framed and was Satoru's sort of friend. So let's take it as this girl is, well, one of those girls who got murdered or kidnapped by supposedly this guy. So once we go back to real time and Satoru realizes that his mom is usually at work at this time, he just heads inside and sort of waits. Is Satoru lays in the exact position where he found his mom dead. She walks in and sees, well, him. And he obviously just starts being amazed and sort of crying because, holy shit, his mom is alive and he just saw her dead. And he gets a chance to stop her from dying. That's just amazing. And he just gets to relive some childhood memories with her. So that's really nice to see. Even though Satoru is happy to be here, tears just start falling down his face randomly, he doesn't even notice it. But, well, we all know why he is crying here. His own mother died right in front of him, but then he got set back so where he could save her, technically, if he tried hard enough. But before that, there's obviously other chances that he's going to be able to stop other stuff from happening or save other people. You may not realize it yet, but obviously it's true since he got set back this far. But the main thing that is making him cry here is the fact that, oh hey, he gets to see his dead mother alive again. And have a nice family dinner like olden times once more. I remember moments like this. I guess back then, I didn't realize how important they'd be. I let times like this slip by. Without even thinking about him. This is revival. It's another chance. And there's no way I'll let this one slip by. Seems off. And then Satoru finally starts the question why he got set back this far. As he looks back at this girl once again. The one that he walked by and they signaled to that obviously she's important or something in this story. That's Kayo Hinazuki. We find out that this she girl's name is Kayo Hinazuki, too. a girl that lived alone with her mom. But as she drops her pencil whilst they're in class, Satoru realizes that she has a bruise on her, or multiple bruises, and that she is somewhat being abused, probably. But to Satoru's friends, they think that he might have a crush on Kayo as he's just been kind of staring at her. So, as to think that Satoru's in love, this guy says that at the end of the day, he'll be talking to his dream girl, or Kayo. And hey, that just exactly happened. <laughs> so, as Kayo asks what he likes about her, he has an answer, but then she answers with this. You're fake too. You're just like I am. You're fake too. So, as the wind blows and everything goes silent in between them, my theory was, wait, is she like him? Can she do the revivals? But obviously she just meant, well, actually fake, you know, he acts happy when he's actually sad and whatnot. 
So as she walks away, Sathora asks if they can be friends, and she says, wait, does that mean you would kill for me? And then all of a sudden, he remembers that she was one of the girls that got killed or kidnapped by Yuki, supposedly at least. Now he realizes why he got set back. She's already being abused, eventually she's going to get killed somehow, and he needs to stop it. So now Satoru's goal was to find out the exact day that Kaio went missing. As by this point, he's kind of running out of time. So as Satoru talks to his sort of the smart friend of the group, or the smartest one of the group, he realizes that there's something more to why he's trying to get close to Kaio rather than him just loving her. The kid says that he was wondering if he's read the essays yet, or more or less, Kaio's essay. As they were talking about Kyle before, and he said that there's a few interesting ones, signifying that, oh hey, Kyle's essay is the interesting one. As he reads the essay, we kind of get this depressing scene of Kayo being sort of put on an island away from everyone around her, just so she's sort of alone and she can do whatever she wants finally. Sort of being free or happy. But this all kind of signifies of her dying as nobody really cares about her and nobody, you know, nothing would change if she died and everything would be the same if she just went to this island of happiness or more or less kind of like a heaven. If she was gone, kids would go to school like nothing happened. Parents would go to work like nothing's happened. And her mom would eat and cook food like nothing's happened. Her thought process is that nobody would really care if she was gone. And even though they did, it wouldn't matter because she's gone. So all she wants is to go far away. So Toru, of course, realizes that it's a cry for help or sort of like a suicide letter. But yeah, after that, Satoru and his mom go to dinner, and Satoru asks if he could have some friends come over for his birthday party. When she asks how many friends would be coming, he says five when he only has around four friends. He says five because he wants Kaio to come so he can sort of protect her and save her from necessarily... Maybe he could save her from dying if she comes, who knows. Satoru thinks that if he can make... Kaio do something do differently something different or a future sort of change it'll from the past how it was fate. back then then maybe it'll, it'll be it'll enough change, change to sort of change her entire future of her dying but as Satoru's mom knows that he only has like four friends she asks if he got a girlfriend or something because he said five as he says that she is a witch after the next day when school was over Satoru headed to go look for Kaio but he didn't really have to search for her as he actually already knew where she was. When it got dark, since he assumed that her mom was sort of abusing her, she went to this park when it was late at night and just kind of waited. And there she was, like always, just how Satoru expected, standing there at the park. All alone. But not this time. Satoru is here. As Satoru says that he came here because he was serious about being her friend, she knows that he's just faking it. And she says that she knows really that like he's not really like that. He's just faking the smile. But he obviously knows, well, that's kind of true. Everything you said's but true. as he thought I to himself pretending. that, well, what, a lose, what could a loser like, like me do to have friends? friends? As that's just so kind of all he wanted in his life. Kind of so like what he did was trying to like everyone and become friends and with them. And it worked. He explains that it was hard at first, but eventually it got easier. But then Kayo says this one line. That is kind of familiar. Yeah. And like, the more you do it, the better the chance it comes true. <gasps> Just like the one girl from episode one said while she was in the hospital. It's like deja vu all over again. For you. But yeah, what? then Satoru uses this chance of talking to her to invite her to, to his come. birthday party. Uh, are you sure it's okay? I mean, won't there be tons of people? Oh, I don't know yet. But I wanted to give you the first invitation. It's on March the 2nd. Huh? You're gonna come, right? Uh -huh. Now, in this scene, when Satoru invited her and said it was on March 2nd, she kind of seemed surprised, like something was going to happen on March the 2nd. Maybe it's a day that her mom is going to beat the living shit out of her like always. Or maybe she's aware of the day that she is going to die. Maybe that is the day. Who knows? So she just kind of says blankly that, uh-huh, she'll come. Yeah. 
As Kaio asks if Satoru has gloves or not, which he obviously doesn't, she puts her hand on his as, well, his hand is obviously cold. This kind of uh, freaks him out, but uh, horny levels intensify, question mark? But yeah, he's like 29, literally, but obviously he's sent back, so he's in like a 10-year-old's body anyway. So, I mean, it's... Eh, eh I don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> I mean, my hand's way bigger than yours, huh? says he bets You're that his idiot. hand is way bigger than her. She calls him an idiot as well. You know, That's kind of funny, but... <laughs> uh, you seem like she okay. says that it's easy, it's easy talking, talking to Satoru, to and she kind of gets him. Well, he just says, well, it's because I decided, cause I decided, to, be decided to be honest with you. And that kind of shocks her. Loud. And then she, well, she runs off. <laughs> As the Toro just says, all right, so, well, um, see you tomorrow, see I guess. You tomorrow? <laughs> but now as Kyle leaves, we get this scene where, well, 18 years ago, after he saw Kyle here at the park, later on, she was found dead, buried under the snow. Now he knows why he was set back this far for the revival. This time, he will save Kayo. So yeah, that was my review for Season 1, Episode 2 of Erase. But yeah, as I am reviewing the entire series, be sure to keep up with the channel and the Erase reviews if you want to be here for more. But yeah, that's all for this video. If you did enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one, whenever that is. My name is Slanted, and peace out.